Linda Daly, and she has been working as a real estate agent. She is also a property manager, and she has become very concerned what she has been discovering over the past few months. She lost her home in the Fountain Grove area, so this is a very personal thing with her, and she's been speaking to insurance companies, and she's been learning about Agenda 21 on Fast Track. <laughs> So, uh, without further ado, let me join us in welcoming Angela. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'll grab my <coughs> my phone right now and turn it on when I need it. Uh, it's off now. So, okay. All right. Hello. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sure. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you for having me. This is so nice to meet everyone and to be here tonight. Um, I'm the newbie in the room, <laughs> so I'm um, I'm getting to know you. And I have to tell you, this was a it's been a a, a road I never would have expected I would ever be on. Um, just in a million years, never had any idea that I'd be standing here. So um, I'm I'm really grateful for your, um, the work you've been doing. I've been finding out about all the work you've been doing. <laughs> it's just amazing work. So I'll just get started and uh, jump in here. Um, I, um, I've been, um, I, I found out about the Eagle Forum about a month ago. Um, and it came to me through a, a website and someone mentioned something about Agenda 21. And I thought, oh, I've got to, I've got to contact this person. And uh, she didn't have anything to say. She just said, hey, here's a magazine, or a, a, it was a Sentinel, actually. And uh, things went from there, and I ended up talking to Orlean. And um, <clears throat> I just, um, I just uh, kind of got, like, like uh, Orlean said, fast-tracked on, on a lot of this. Um, as a backdrop, um, I first heard about Agenda 21 about 10 years ago. Um, and about and, and from the few people that I had spoken with about this or that brought it to my attention um, They kind of dropped the subject and they didn't continue following it nor did I um, I think well I looked it up from time to time But I didn't see how it was going to be moving forward on a local level I got it that it was going on globally and I understood Sort of the powers that be and I I come from a, a worldview keeping my eye more or less on the end times from a biblical perspective um, and and one world currency, one world government, you know, we one world leader. We kind of know these things are are coming. They've been prophesied, and it's it's all it's all pretty pretty plain to see. And you, but I did not understand what part of this these end times I might be experiencing this way. Um, and I had uh, so. Um, so um, I heard about this at Ground Zero with my own eyes. <laughs> I'm up into my eyeballs with this, and I don't really have a choice. I didn't ask for this. But uh, one thing I did have knowledge of was a book by Naomi Klein called The Shock Doctrine, where she talks about the similarities to the Nazis' use of the word homeland and homeland surveillance, and how it had to do with nine, how after 9-11, we saw the, the same term, homeland and homeland security, being implemented in the United States. And, um, and there were just some amazing parallels. So, um, but again, I didn't know how or where to step in and get involved. And, um, and then, of course, Deborah and Paul and Orlean, uh, you know, the way that they present it to the community is, is, is very um, user-friendly. And, um, and I appreciate that. Um, so, I had also read a book called The Economic Hitman by John Perkins, and th I think that's another must-read. Um, I read, and I also read in, the, in college a book called Night by Ellie Wiesel. It's an amazing book. Um, well, first of all, John, John uh, Perkins, when he talks about um, the book The Economic Hitman, it really makes it clear about these kinds of international, how we go internationally, everybody does, all these, these companies, the multinationals and the NGOs. And he really talks about how it's all part of a bigger picture. And uh, it, it, all the big players from a very big political and a geopolitical and a, and a financial perspective. And I, uh, wow, I just didn't, yeah, that was, that's, that's been an amazing read. And um, didn't really know what to do with that information, but I've sort of had my eyes on it. And you can get to familiar with the, the companies that he kind of refers to off and on in, 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 in on the stock market. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of uh, iffy about um, 
about even when I bought when I purchased something I have to say am I supporting this <laughs> what, am I, what am I you know anyway we can go there forever but that's that's a long rabbit trail but um, another book by uh, called night by Ellie Weissel he, he was a con he was a concentration camp survivor and one of the most eerie takeaways from that book was his description of the way that martial law was implemented and how people were led onto into trains Oh, it just kind of takes my breath away talking about it. One thing I have seen since the fires is an ever-present police force. Um, I am telling you, I can't count how many times in a given day I see police and sheriff's cars, and I never used to see them before. I'm not usually looking for them, but I'm not even looking for them now, and they're just everywhere. I've, I, I don't, I've never seen this before. And um, to think that the smart train is in Coffee Park where they want to add a high de higher density housing in a walkable, sustainable community, you know, where people will potentially have the train for transportation. That just really concerns me. Um, so that brings us to today, kind of the, the backdrop, how I kind of got here, a little bit about what I've seen. So briefly about myself, while I'm not working right now as a real estate agent, I've been involved in real estate for most of my working life, doing property management and flipping homes, and, and most recently involved in, with some land development. I've been married 30 plus years to an engineering manager of a high-tech manufacturing company. Uh, my husband and I and our college-age son lost our home on August 8th, um, having about 15 minutes to leave. There was no power, no contact lenses were on, <laughs> it was pitch dark, the CO2 monitor sirens were going, sounding off, it was just incredibly loud, flashlights weren't working properly, there was thick smoke, and there were no fire trucks, none, and no sirens in sight. This was intentional. Um, I smelled smoke at 10 p.m., and I received a Nixle report. And the Nixle report said, multiple fires are reported around Sonoma County. We, this is a quote. We, we currently have fires at Mark West Springs and Reebley Road in Santa Rosa. That's n two miles or so where I live from, or from where I, I live. Shiloh and Condi in Windsor, and Highway 116 at Fredericks and Sebastopol. Local fire departments are on scene and will notify you if any evacuations are called for. The strong winds are making these fires difficult. Hmm. Dispatchers are being overwhelmed by 911 calls on reports of smoke smell. Please only call 911 if you see actual unattended flames. Hmm. All right, so then at 10 o'clock, we had the police with, or I'm sorry, 1 o'clock, 1 a.m., we had the police with no sirens, just lights on, not the fire department, telling people door to door that they had to leave. Later we, later we learned that the fire chief and his lieutenant were both off duty that night. That, and I found that very odd that no backup protocols, apparently, I don't know, were, were not used or were, you know, weren't, weren't used instead, and that they apparently were out of reach or something. I mean, this just doesn't add up. Now, you know, I can go on and on. I don't want to spend our, all of our time on the oddities of, of, of that night, but you just you get the picture. There's just more than a thousand red flags going on here. Uh, so from the beginning, there was a total abandonment of the authorities uh, to use the emergency systems. We also had a landline, but with the power out, it didn't work. So um, immediately, I knew that these fires weren't normal. And it had to be some kind, I believed it had to be some kind of a military operation, and that is still my belief right now. Um, I started looking up videos of the fires and saw how directed energy weaponry, also called DEW, D E W, D DEWS, uh, D E W apostrophe S, DEW weaponry, DEW, do, um, uh, laser is actually what it is. It's, it's DEW microwave technology, and it's, it's very well documented and it's patented technologies, and we can ref look at that and find those very quickly. I've got plenty of YouTubes to talk to you about. But anyway, this, this is not a, a, a harebrained idea. This is a expensive, multi-billion dollar corporate and, and governmental work here on these technologies. These dues, I believe, have, have been used. Um, too many fires in two locations all at once, all burning. Um, as if set on fire at once, nowhere did I see videos of er areas catching on fire and spreading. Though it may have happened, all I knew and saw was literally that everything was on fire at the same time. And that's what the videos show. And I saw that that night and I was befuddled. I was befuddled w with these fires just everywhere, all at once, all around us. No warning, 
it, it, it just didn't add up. Let's see, I was here talking about the, things were spreading fire and everything was on fire at the same time, including when we fled to Vacaville that night. The entire wall of the eastern hills south of Santa Rosa were all on fire at the same time. And I, I just don't see how it could have spread that fast, that far, and done that amount of damage in two to four hours. Plus, 101 was closed northbound at the same time with the same amount of damages kind of going on everywhere all at once. I, I believe Paradise Ridge Winery reportedly uh, was, was completely engulfed in flames around 1 or 1.30 at the same time my home was on fire, yet it's about 1.5 miles west of my home. So how did embers fly that far and that fast and engulf Paradise Ridge Winery, engulf it in flames? at the same time my house was just supposedly catching on fire. It, it, it just doesn't add up if we're talking this theory of embers and what have you. Anyway, uh, so I have never heard of an unannounced hurricane force, of, of unannounced hurricane force winds coming from the east in the middle of the night that suddenly started and stopped within two to three hours. And you can check the weather that night, it's on record. There's a sharp spike and it's just there when all everything came flooding into the area where I was. Maybe it, it, it I don't know what the weather report uh, or whether wh how things moved from the perspective of the fire, how the fire itself moved, but the winds spiked at about, I believe it was around 11 or 12 o'clock, and it spiked for about two to three hours. You can see it. It just went from 10 to two, 12, spiked, and then came back down, and about two, two to three o'clock, it was back down where it was at 10, and then it just precipitously dropped again. Uh, it just doesn't add up and uh, to me. And um, I've never, just never heard of that. The hur hurricane force winds. And, um, and there are no investigations today that have determined a cause. Another thing is, where's the debris? If these were hurricane force winds, why is everything everywhere just the streets are pristine? You drive down, there's just ash. Hurricane force winds would blow so many things over. The only thing I've ever seen overturned in this, in this is, is, is cars. And they have holes in them. You know, I mean, no. That <laughs> doesn't add up. It, cars aren't supposed to. How about a few trees? How about a few garbage cans? There's pictures of houses that are ash, and the garbage can is right next, just right next to it, a few feet away, and it's standing there. And this is right after the fire. We have a, a fountain thing, a little thingy in the front, and it's not big, but I mean, why wasn't that knocked over? I had tomato plants. The planters weren't even knocked over in my backyard. Come on, They're, everything is fried. You've got hurricane force winds and you're trying to tell me everything in my yard is right where I left it? I can't believe this. You know, this is just not a believable story. So, not that the winds weren't there, but when they were there, I don't know what, what they were doing, but they sure were not propagating the fire the way that, that, it's, that it's being told, in, in my opinion. So, number one, DEWs. This is Pandan Technology, Lockheed Martin, and maybe others. I'm not sure about all of the manufacturers. Uh, Remsfeld and Petraeus are on record in a video saying that they have this technology, and they were testing it. This is back in, I think, 2003. Um, and they hope not to use it. And they go on saying things like, but there may be a need that we can't foresee, and that kind of thing. Um, so these are, this is a chilling video. Um, and then another thing that's very chilling is the, ch the, the video of the Kmart building here in town. Concrete jungle and ash, a 100,000 square foot building burned down in one hour, everything in it. I'm not a forensics expert, but that doesn't add up. Where in the world did this fire come from? You just cannot convince me that embers flew over and took down 100,000 square feet. I'll never believe that. That's just improbable as heck. And if somebody can disprove that, I, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. So, um, uh, I, I just have ha had all these, these, uh, these things with the, the uh, I believe it's d directed energy weaponry. Um, and also, um, the, the, uh, there's some talk about the Walmart and FEMA buildings. I think Kmart and other soon to be empty, once thriving commercial buildings will become warehouses someday for weaponized humans through more disasters and engineered health crises, whether it's brought on by microwave technology, mandatory flu shots, dams collapsing, a created EMP like the, like I believe we had the night of the fires. 
there were talks about these these fires the power going out before the fires were reported so they weren't created by the fires so what took them out what took the power out if that's true now I'm not a I don't have the records for that that's what I've heard so we can check that out but that's another question to answer and um, by the way the exact same video footage of the LA fires is going it, it, when you look at these LA fires it's the same footprint you just yeah you just it's it's staggering uh, there are no words to describe this this is like a war zone and it looks nothing like something burnt it looks like something completely incinerated it looks like a graveyard and uh, so there's this uh, uh, website I want to direct people to it's called a plain truth info excellent resources for um, um, some of these um, uh, ideas here that uh, uh, he just does a very good job I think and uh, number two is why would our government do this to us okay if you're you know if you're wondering gee was well, okay you are blowing yourselves up and you know you're damaging the you know the uh, the environment etc why would people do this well I uh, I would recommend people see Deborah's video on USA Inc um, and I'm not gonna attempt to put it in her words she can do a much better job an excellent job but I, I I'm I'm aware that agenda 21 has literally commoditized us and um, and then for the so there's this book here and uh, I didn't quite understand if agenda 21 was real until this gentleman uh, brought this on a somewhere and he he said you can buy this so I bought it and it was inexpensive and whatever and well, it says right here on um, on page, and this is the, the the original kind of the the founding version, if you will. This is like the the template for the soft treaty that they used, and then it became hard treaty. But uh, and you may know this, you guys are all the Agenda Twenty One experts, but I'm just still learning this. And and what I found out was on page one of intro, the intro page, it says from the top page, um, explaining Agenda Twenty One is action to be implemented quote by governments, development agencies, UN NGOs, and independent sector groups in every area where human parentheses economic that's those are their words economic activity affects the environment well we're human and that means that they've just called us economic resources all right so they are saying that humans are economic activity and that we can be collateralized so page two goes and you could go on and find more I'm just giving you a brief you know if you read you just kind of go wow there it is I can give you those and you can follow up on it um, page two and three go on to say that combating poverty is the main problem for the environment poverty and environmental this is their quote poverty and environmental degradation are closely interrelated Global environmental de deterioration is an unsustainable pattern of consumption and production, particularly in the industrialized countries, which aggravates poverty and imbalances. So, in order to reach environmental sustainability, this is now that's the end of the quote. So, in order to reach environmental sustainability, poverty has to go. And that means humans, especially in the developed countries, that quote, aggravate poverty and imbalances. Wow, that's a pretty huge statement. So several sources, such as the Georgia Guidestones, has as its number one tenet, maintain humanity under a half a billion people in perpetual balance with nature. So we are subject to nature, how they determine whatever that is. If they, if we, if they think we're harming nature, we gotta go. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, and, and, and not to mention the number. I mean, how are you gonna get rid of six and a half billion people? Hmm. <laughs> I'm starting to understand how. I'm, it's just really, this is like, and for all of you who've had been up to speed with this for a while, I gotta tell you, it, oh man, this is, this is, this will keep you up at night. <laughs> this is not a fun thing to study. I wish I could go back in time. I'm so grieving for the day when I kind of thought the world was a lot friendlier and that things were much further out a few generations or maybe this was just a bad somebody wearing a, you know uh, promoting a lot of, of ideas that 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 weren't well founded but if you carried them out perhaps no I'm getting it these are not just well founded these are being very very clearly and forcefully exacted pardon me it is an action plan and they make it very clear and they are executing to it brilliantly and I'm I need to get up to speed 
So that's, uh, man, this is, this is not easy. Whew, so, um, let's see. Um, I believe Santa Rosa is a test case in part because we have an active resistance here, but also because they have the smart train now. Thanks to the fire, they may have a ready to implement walkable, sustainable community in Coffee Park, mm -hmm. which people like Shirley Zane continue to insist that they will push through. And that's, you can read her quotes in the Press Democrat and on and on. I brought some of them too if you want to talk about it. As for Fountain Grove, this, fall, this allows A A21 communities to cover both sides of the freeway. Not that I understand, I'm just guessing at this point. And it made it ha a handy excuse that the fires burn in the exact same footprint as the Hanley Fire in 1964. Um, and it created absolute financial havoc on as many people as possible in the community. Also, if the government is using geo-engineered suicide, or genocide, then <laughs> suicide, could they? <laughs> Please. No, I'm sorry, I don't mean that. I don't, I truly don't. I don't want anyone to die. I truly want people to come to Christ, understand the truth, and to know the value of human life, and to be deeply, deeply repentant, because these are evil times. And this is so serious. It's just so horribly difficult and sometimes I have to make light of it to get through it mm -hmm. because what we're talking about here is not s small uh, so uh, anyway uh, if the government is using geoengineered genocide then they got to test it on on us we're, we're a test case I believe with the DEWs of this magnitude and then they went south so that's my theory. All right. Insurance. My agent said that foundations have not historically been insured as separate items as they don't usually burn. However, most of all, most, if not all of these and the LA fires have burned to the foundations. So who's going to cover this? This is an additional expense. My insurance broker said that all of the California um, taxpayers, or I'm not taxpayers, insurance payers will have rates increasing to pay for these losses, and some will not be able to afford insurance. Also, agents are being sued now with people saying that they should have had them insured if they were already in a fire hazard area. So there's more costs ahead. And who was really responsible? And then did the, it's, it's the, the passing of the buck. Well, the city approved it, but you didn't, did it, and we, we didn't insure. Well, you said it was, and we can't account for it, so now we're all in it together, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, so that's how that went. And... Um, I have to say that that was tricky because that was interesting because for me, when I walk around and I do a lot of, I, I, I sometimes have, have looked at some of these places, not, not, not so much, but just anyway, and it doesn't matter. My point is when I've looked at these areas, um, I, have, I have seen all the foundations ruined. I haven't seen a single foundation that did survive. That's just me. Maybe there is one. I just haven't seen it. Now, I'm not an expert. And I don't go around, you know, talking to every structural engineer in town. But just even looking, if, if you know anything about foundations, you just go, uh-uh, nope, mm, nope, mm, nope. And it's pretty easy to figure out. So, um, you know, that this, the whole issue comes up as um, uh, if you're, it, it, this is what can put people over the top. If they had a policy that didn't have the current square footage costs, if you bought your home in 1990 and your home burned and you had a, you had a policy on it that covered a 200 square foot, $200 per, uh, dollar per square foot cost on it, and now let's just say building costs are 400, just random, then wh where's that difference going to come from? Well, maybe you can, maybe you can have a policy that can cover some of that, but if your foundation is gone, you're toast. That's the, bum that's the bummer, that's the rub, that's the big surprise here um, for everybody. So, um, yeah, who would, who would know? Who would think? And another thing, if you want to, oh my gosh, you want to talk about a trippy uh, thing about uh, uh, DEWs and how these fires burn so intensely and so hot and so at the ground. There's, look up a Paradise Ridge um, uh, video, uh, you can probably find it, and it's literally showing the ground, the, the wine that's spilled out of the wherever, and the ground is boiling, and it's just dirt and it's boiling it is on fire how is that possible and another thing is if you think about it how did these foundations burn if heat rises how did these em so-called embers come in on the dom blow in boo boo and burn down you know and have you seen the video of the guy who took the the, the video of the tree that's on fire and it's burning from the inside out you seen there's so much of this kind of thing so um, you know um, yeah well, foundations and when you look at those videos everything is burning on a pad 
you know, you, I don't know if anybody's, but I just look at those videos out there and I, and I, even the, the, the next day I just went, wait, the, wait, what? Because everything was just burning so perfectly square, square, on fire, a square, all perfectly square fire, square fire, just square fires. What? No, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting that. I just don't see that um, any more than I saw the 911 buildings come down in, in a straight column that just defies gravity and everything else. And that's a um, demolition. That's got to be controlled demolition. They just do that with two and three story buildings, not to mention those big ones. So anyway, if you look at the maps, uh, oh, uh, maps, I was going to show you. Okay, I brought some, 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 some supports here. Let me show you. And, um, and uh, I, I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now we're into kind of the nitty gritty with these with these uh, pictures here. I don't know. You might have already seen this. Has everyone seen the um, simulated reserve corridor system? The, you see, all seen this. You're all familiar with this. Okay, and and then the, where human access is denied. Okay, and the sim yeah, and and so this is California, and and I didn't do the whole United. Well, the small that that first one I showed you is the United States, but just as is everybody familiar with what Santa Rosa and this this area looks like? You can look at it when and and it's online. All of this is I'm not you know, this isn't proprietary. It's just you know, so um, it, it's it's pretty shocking when you start to when a person starts to look at what. Well, where we can't go <laughs> and what's planned so um, the question becomes oh of course so thank you so the red is where there can be let me get my glasses on just so I say it right the red areas are called core reserves and corridors which are little to no human use little to none humans cannot go there um, the yellow are buffer zones, which are highly regulated use. And then the um, normal use zones of cooperation, that'd be all the sustainability and Agenda 21 cooperative uh, communities, are in the green. Our area is in a, in a green here, but I don't know, I don't know all the boundary lines. I'm, not, I'm still not sure. I'd like to get more information on this if anybody has it, because I'd like to know, I'd like to know more. Um, and then, of course, there's the international... Well, uh, Indian reservations are in the pink and that sort of thing. And there's a big border down here. And I wondered if that's what we're funding for the wall, which we're calling the wall, which is all passed through NAFTA. Doesn't that make perfect sense? Doesn't that make perfect sense? Yeah. We're paying for that wall whether we wanted one or not, <laughs> whether we get one or not. It'll be there one day. It just will keep us in. That's the goal. <laughs> keep us in. That's the tricky. Oh, all right. Now I, now I know the po Okay. I'm, I'm going to be in. <laughs> there's nobody out. Okay. <laughs> I just don't think like that. <laughs> I just don't think like that. I am too slow. I'm too slow on the uptake. That's why I have to work so hard to catch up. <laughs> it's like, man, it's like following the butterfly here. Whew. So, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. All right. So, um, is your is your home in a yellow area? Where where will where housing will ultimately be prohibited through impossible regulations, such as updating your home to these current building code standards? And I love what you read tonight in the um, Gazette. I believe you read or one of the is about the codes. This is what we're hearing. So, can your rural fire or police station be closed due to the lack of funding, making all homes in your area non-conforming and uninsurable? And this gets back to whether or not there will be solvency in these in these insurance industries. I mean, really, th where, what are they going to do? How, what happens? Is the state going to take them over if they, become, if they become insolvent? We don't even know the extent of the damage. I mean, it's just going on and on and on. Um, and then uh, one Valley Fire victim said that five of her 34, 35 homes in her area were rebuilt and the rest have walked away. So that was an interesting statistic. And the Valley Fire was 2015. 15, yes, in Middletown, and I guess I don't even know the extent of yeah. the fire. Um, so toxins with debris everywhere, um, with water, water runoff, uh, we could we become a Superfund site? That was the very first question I asked my my um, insurance agent, my my broker. I, I, and the, her face went blank, <laughs> and uh, she she had no answer, which is understandable. I don't know how they could have an answer yet. 
Um, but right now, if you build on the same footprint, not enlarging your pad, you can expedite your permit process. But even so, will there be any new regulations before and while people are rebuilding that will come up that will make our area uninsurable, the area you're building? Um, then what is your home or lot going to be worth if it's declared uninsurable? Or in these fire zones, there's a huge risk to rebuild. And then there's a glut, right now there's a glut of vacant lots on the market driving prices of lots down even further. Um, and what carriers will be able to insure the lots in the future if the industry is taking a hit? Okay, will the feds ha or the state have to step in? And then um, debt. So debt is apparently the only way out through these FEMA and SBA loans for a lot of people. It's been that way with the hurricanes. So um, I've heard that some banks will receive disaster relief funds and then only offer it as a loan, albeit lower rates, um, to victims to rebuild what insurance doesn't cover and you know you think about that they're using it more or less as a slush fund I mean that's just so cruel to me if you want to you know request you know hey come on uh, give some disaster assistance to the victims we will distribute this really we, we don't really usually I've never asked how how is that going to get distributed uh, uh, do you call me do I call you and they gave out some you had to fill out a form and this and that and, and, the, and, the, and the amount that I saw was like a thousand dollars all right I don't know if that's gonna I don't know. I don't know what happens to all that money. I would just love to see some accountability in, in the disaster relief efforts. Love to see that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dream on. Um, okay, so then I want to show you this video of what Santa Rosa was saying in 2017. And I'll leave you on this because this to me is, uh, this is where we're at with things. Oh, and then um, this is a picture if you would like to come, I won't show right now, but if you'd like to come up later, uh, of just the, 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 what I'm talking about. This is one of any picture you can pull, uh, but um, it, it, it has the Fountain Grove area. And you can just see uh, where, to me, the lines don't come through. It just, this doesn't add up. The lines, the path isn't clearly de 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 delineated here because this, this path starts over here. All right, and you see, okay, maybe some fire burn, but then these are toast. And these trees are alive, and it didn't jump across. And these neighbors, I know who these people are, and there's nothing that came over their side. And it certainly didn't come from the green. So where, and it didn't come from over here. I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't. Drop from the sky. Right, you know. So that's one example. That's one example. And that, this is a line that they drew for that same area. I just pulled it up. And they've got these red uh, and yellow areas here, which are uh, BLM has put these together. Bureau of Land Management and, and is showing the lines that they're going to they're going to declare as like the orange the darker orange is a high fire hazard area and the yellow is a high fire or very high fire is the orange and high hi, uh, high fire is is the the the, yeah, the lighter color and um, and then there's a I, I don't know you, know you have to ask okay they're already redrawing the lines but I didn't I don't know where I fit I don't know we'll see right so um, and then I want to play you this, um, this is called How and Why California Fires Were DEW Created, DEW, Directed Energy Weaponry. Um, and, the, and, and this, this guy, um, uh, it, it, but I, I'm telling you, hang on just one second, maybe I can find it again. Um, um, but um, why isn't that there? I just can't believe it because it showed the whole three minutes I was in here watching it. A minute. Your number and they're going to get you now. Yeah. <laughs> well, they already did. Okay. And we're past that. We're past that. There are many other ways. There are. Oh, of course. That's right. So give us the summation. Of what yeah. Saying. So the bottom line of what he said, I'm going to turn my phone off. He, um, he says the following. He has a graphic up there. And the, the, it's, it, I can tell you where it is. Go to minute 14. Actually, 13 and a half. And uh, so I'll spare you the whole, if, if you don't have time, you can just go to four, minute 13 and a half. Why is this not turning off there? And, um, and what it is, is it came from the city of Santa Rosa, and it makes it really clear. This woman is saying that they have these um, uh, rezoning efforts in place. And these are going to be very difficult for people. It's going to put us out of... Uh, uh, you know, being able to rebuild basically, and that these lines mirror the same lines, and what uh, she's talking about the fact that some of these people are kind of arrogant in thinking that people won't find out about this. I mean, it goes on. It's quite interesting information, and he's got the the thing right there to read it word for word. I'm you know giving you just a sentence or so. 
but it's it's an amazing uh, piece of information. So I feel like I've gone on too long, but I appreciate it and uh, thanks and and God bless all of us. <laughs> Thank you. And we have a.